Let me first introduce in a quick, or show you as a quick overview, which is Argentina and our small figures. We are in South America. Our language is Spanish, and my capital city is Buenos Aires. We are a federation of 23 provinces. We have a, a, a peso, an Argentinian peso, which is four point something to the, against to the US dollar. Uh, we are almost 42 million people. Uh, urban areas, 89%. And the GDP with 6,050 US dollars per capita. In terms of telecommunication, just to you understand our situation, we have uh, less than 10 million fixed line telephone lines, more than a mobile line per person in the country. Most of them are prepaid. 85% 85, 85 of the mobile lines are prepaid. Uh, and we are almost 7 million uh, fixed connections to internet. And we have, in terms of uh, companies, we have two incumbents, one in the north and one in the south of the country. When we get privatized in early 90s, we split the country in two, and we have Telecom from Italy, which is the main operator in the north, which the name is Telecom Argentina, and Telecom Telefonica from Spain, which is Telefonica Argentina in the south. And we have also a new uh, entrant, which is American Mobile, the Mexican company, which is the third cellular operator also in, in Argentina. Uh, it's a situation is that on paper, we are a full competition since 2000 but not in fact. Uh, the, number, the, the market is on 50% for each of the incumbent, more or less. Uh, and we have a couple of long distance company bringing local loops and long distance interconnection inside the country. And there is a situation we, we always talk about is that you must know how far you are from the main capital in terms of kilometer, asking for the wholesale price of internet. As far as you go from the city, the price increase a lot. For example, let me tell you. In Buenos Aires, the, the wholesale price for an ISP is around $100 monthly for a megabit. In the north of the country, more than 1,500 kilometers from the city, the price is almost $1,000 monthly. So it's a big difference from one place to the other. Cabase is an old name. Cabase was founded in 1989. So at that time, our name in Spanish is the translation of the uh, Chamber of a company that brings access to online databases. At that time, there was no internet in Argentina, so this is the, the acronym, CABASE, of our association. Actually, we have more than 100 associates from Buenos Aires and several provinces. Uh, we got inside the association not only the ISP, we got also other international organizations. Um, we have uh, content providers also being part of our association. We have international companies and mostly local. Uh, we open and operate the first IEX on Argentina in 1996. And since uh, last year, we start this project, which we name the broadband federalization, that makes open more than 
this uh, IS, IX in Buenos Aires. And the ISP uh, community has a chair inside the Universal Service Committee in, in Argentina fighting to set up internet as part of the universal service. Our challenge through the last years and for the next is that the new providers uh, have voice and vote in the universal service uh, programs in Argentina, uh, equilibrate the argument for subsidies between the, the Secretary of Communication and the incumbents. The market is so close, as I said, in fact, it's not so open. And works in the relations, in the international relationships from the Argentina to the world, like associations like the AAAI uh, and A, as uh, Peter said. Uh, we are trying to develop programs inside the country, helping the ISP, the local ISP, to be taking care of the universal services and to develop new services to be bring it to the communities. And what this federalization of broadband means for us? As I said, we have very different prices on the wholesale market, depends on the location where the ISP are. Uh, and also we have a lack of capacity inside the country. We have, in, the, in Argentina, we, we have more than uh, 2,500 wireless ISP. But most of them are not uh, licensed and are not part of the regulation. So uh, it's, it's so easy to start up a, a wireless ISP inside the country. So to raise an antenna and to bring the service and to serve at least 100 customers is cheap, but is not legal at all. So the reality is that we have almost 200 uh, licensed ISP and more than 2,500 2, not licensed ISPs bringing wireless services. So the market is so competitive in that part because it's the situation and also all of them, the ISPs and the, the, and the wireless ISP are fighting against the incumbent because they buy from the, from the incumbent the, the wholesale services. So there is a competing situation because the incumbent also sell to the retail and homes in the same, in the same locations. Um, so, based on that situation, we decided to open more internet exchange in the, inside the country. Uh, interconnected, all of them, by fiber optics and supported by the association. And we decided to separate or divide our traffic in three different ways. The local traffic, the national traffic, and the international traffic. Because one meg international cost in Buenos Aires $35 monthly el meg, per meg. But inside the country, as I said, the total, the, what I say, the transit cost is almost $1,000 monthly for the meg. So we have to take this decision and we split the traffic. So at the internet exchange point, in all of them, the local traffic is just a peer traffic. There is no cost. Now one sells to the other one. The national traffic is supported by the association with all of the members together. So we develop and we try to develop national traffic. And each ISP decides how much international traffic they buy. But we negotiate all together the price with the international carriers. So we reduce the cost 
for all of us, from the international carriers like Global Crossing or Telefonica, to a single price that a small ISP inside the country can afford. Okay? So this is, was our strategy started last year, and we are now, we have uh, nine IX running with m more than 20 uh, ISP connected in each one of them, and we expect to have 23 at the end of this year. And we, the internet exchange, we, we named NAPS, Network Access Point, okay? So we have these 10 reasons for the regional NAPS. First is to get better price. Second and more important is the availability. Sometimes an ISP inside the country wants to increase his full side bandwidth and ask for the incumbent to bring more capacity. And they say, okay, uh, this will be available for you in the next nine months. So how can they bring good service to their customer? The local ISP or the regional ISP could not grow as they need, so they grow as the incumbent wants. So develop this point and make the availability for all, uh, the capacity available for all uh, is fast to grow and it's easy and everyone knows the price. So the price is on the table negotiated by all the associations. Uh, the, the third issue is one that is very important for the small ISP is to be an owner. Which, which means to be an owner? To be an owner of the last mile that interconnect the ISP with the internet exchange. So they are building up this infrastructure, mostly fiber optics, sometimes radio interconnections, to go for uh, more or less 150 kilometers distance from their facility to the internet exchange point. So taking care of this situation, the ISP become an owner of the last mile and goes to the internet exchange point where the capacity is available. So he can grow at they want. Also, we are focusing on local caches to bring more traffic close to the close to the customers and to the local ISPs and develop and, and we are uh, working a lot with local governments with local uh, universities to develop local content so the local traffic is free for them interconnected in the who are interconnected in the internet exchange so it's so important that the average of free traffic in the whole formula of them is the local traffic. So they, there is a need to increase the amount of the local traffic. Another reason is the redundancy. We are trying and we just make a ring, a fiber optic ring, connecting most of the internet exchange points. So they have more than one chance to, to be served in some way. The other part is belong to the association, is to be part and uh, knows and be updated on everything that's happened on the, in the industry day by day. Uh, also to have a legal equality, it means we have this situation which is in some way uh, irregular because we have more ISP without license that we have with license. So we try to put all together in the same table. Sometimes we are facing a guy which writes an, uh, uh, an antenna in a town, a small town inside the country, and 
by the law, by the regulation, we must to take the antenna down. But we want to give them a prize to be the one that writes internet in a new town. So we have this big discussion inside our country and our association because we need to be all of us in the same equal uh, legal respect. The cost of the NAPs is pay us a, a monthly expenses like in a building. We share the, the cost between all of us and we pay as uh, shares of the expenses monthly, so we reduce the cost to operate the internet exchange and the possibility to grow as, uh, as we need. So, about this project, we, we work a lot because we think this is the way that we find to change the reality inside the country. We have... Uh, the first result that we have uh, get is that the increase of the national traffic more than 50% in the last year. And we expect to double at the end of this year the, the national and the local traffic, which means in reducing the cost for the operation for the ISPs. And we expect to be uh, double again the next year. So uh, you must understand also that there is no so content in Spanish, but there is a lot also. But we are trying to develop content and new services and new value added services on the internet to support over the, the internet exchange point. We have uh, a main rule that is named the multilateral agreement. So everybody on the IX must sign the multilateral agreement, which means they get all the local traffic to the internet exchange and gets all the other local traffic from the other. So national ISPs or national carriers that wants to be connected to the different IX points must to sign this each uh, multilateral agreement for each IX point, bringing the local traffic for free in this point. And this is a very tough discussion that we have with the incumbent because they want to charge us, not in a peer situation, they want to sell us as a IP transit, they name. And we got the situation in the in a couple of internet exchange in the south, in the province of Neuken, was the first one that we started a year ago. The local traffic supported by internet exchange now is the double of the traffic of the incumbent. So the discussions turn the side now. So we, we have more traffic than them. So we don't want to pay for this uh, peering. We want to peer with the incumbent in, the, in this area. So this is a situation that is going to be held in most of the internet exchange inside the country. So taking this as a quick overview of our situation in Argentina, uh, I just nothing more to say and thank you again for hosting me here. Okay.